Hello everyone. Welcome to Civil Engineering and Stuff. And in today's video lecture, we are going to be discussing about the difference between CBR and effective CBR values. Then we are also going to discuss what 90th percentile CBR value is, when do we use it and how to find it. So this CBR we know CBR value or CBR is the California bearing ratio and it is the ratio that is expressed in percentage of force per unit area required to penetrate a soil mass with a standard circular piston at the rate of 1.25 mm per minute to that of required for the corresponding penetration of a standard material. This we know that the CBR or the California being the show is that we apply load over the soil sample of which we want to find out the, the force per unit area and uh, or the bearing property of the soil with respect to the standard material. The loading date is 1.25 mm per minute and at two standard loading that is 2.5 mm and 5 mm we find out the CVR value with respect to the standard load of 1370 kgs for 2.5 and 2055 kg for 5 mm. We have uh, the in situ soil or the soil at the field. So, so whatever with the penetration value of 2.5 mm, we take that value for uh, 5 mm, we take that value. And through this, we find out the corresponding CVR value. And in generally, uh, like 2.5 value is higher than 5 mm value, 2.5 mm penetration value is higher than 5 mm penetration value. So we take 2.5 mm value. But in case 5 mm penetration value is, is higher than 2.5 mm, penetration value then we repeat the test and if the same results are, are repeated then we take the whatever be the value at 5 mm penetration. This is like a general CVR uh, test that we know through this we draw graphs. Now why do we find out this CVR? The CVR or the California being ratio is found for for the in situ soil that, that is the soil that is to be used as the subgrade layer. The soil that will be in general will be used as a subgrade layer of the flexible pavement system. Correct. So through this we find out the what is the uh, bearing ratio with respect to the standard uh, material and if the value satisfies the minimum CBR value then it's good to go. We use this soil for the subgrade layer preparation and above that we we construct the other layers so that for that purpose we do the cbr test now in field what happens is that if this is your subgrade layer if this is your subgrade layer of flexible payment of course above that we will have sub base we will have base we will have surface course so definitely for subgrade layer we do the CBR test and this subgrade as per IRC 37 this 500 mm of, of thickness of the soil is treated, treated as your subgrade layer. Your subgrade is nothing but the natural soil. Natural or the in situ soil. The soil that is there at the field that will be compacted to its maximum dry density and above which the other layers of flexible pavement will be constructed. if the soil has the minimum CVR value. Correct. Now, this is the thickness of soil subgrade. Definitely, below this also will be the same soil, the natural soil. This natural soil, beyond this 500 mm depth, also we have the same soil. Now, it may happen, it may happen in a site, this the CBR value of the soil subgrade is different from that of the embankment or the soil that is below it. Reason may be different. The reason can may be that the soil subgrade that you have or the natural soil may require some soil stabilization te techniques and because of the soil stabilization technique the CBR value increases to a greater extent. Let's say you have added lime or you have added cement to improve the geotechnical properties 
of this soil and because of this there is a huge difference in the severe value of the soil subgrade and that of embankment embankment or or your borrow borrow soil borrow soil because of which there is a there begins a huge gap between the severe of both the type of soil okay now in case when there is a significant difference between the severe of slated soil subgrade and embankment soil then we have to use effective severe value in that case we have to use effective severe value okay so in case where the severe of the embankment or the borrow soil is different from that of subgrade then we have to use effective severe now to find out the effective severe we are provided with a graph these are provided by irc 37 the code that is used for the design of flexible pavement now comparing with the conventional cbr graph this conventional cbr graph looks something like that and if there is some correction required if there is a curvature then of course certain correction is required and that is to be done correct this is your conventional cbr graph while for effective cbr we are provided with this graph that, that is provided by irc 37 in the irc code only you will find this graph now in this graph what we have is we have the cvr of compacted borrow material of 500 mm thick and cvr below 500 mm of the compacted subgrade that is they have formulated a correlation they have find out the cvr of the soil subgrade and cvr of the soil embankment or the borrow soil below it okay now again i'm repeating this nest the, overall the soil is same right generally your soil subgrade as well as as well as your borrow soil conventionally remains same and subgrade is the top 500 mm thickness of the natural soil is what we call as the soil subgrade okay now we may have added uh, some soil stabilization technique just for example because of which the cbr has increased very much and there is a huge difference between the soil subgrade and the embankment Uh, cvr value okay this is just an example so in that case we have cvr of compacted borrow material 500 mm thick that is cvr of this layer of of the soil subgrade and then we have cvr of the soil that is below this 500 mm of this soil of this soil okay so let's say you have uh, added let us uh, lime or cement to the soil and the cvr has reached to a value of 20 of the soil subgrade compacted borrow material the cvr is 20 while this cbr of the soil below it below 500 and thickness is, let's say is 5 so in that case you are going to use this line okay you are going to use this curve and you are just going to match like this and from here you will get the effective cvr value of this subgrade the effective cvr value of subgrade uh, let's say in this case is is 13.5% okay so in this case it comes out to be 13.5% in a similar way let's say your cvr of compacted borrow material is 500 of is 30 while that of your borrow material uh, below 500 and thickness is 7 so again you are going to use like this so in this case the effective cvr the y axis represent the effective cvr will be 20.1% just for example okay so this is how you find out the effective cvr value all right i hope the concept of effective cvr is clear to you and that how it differs from the cvr value cvr value is for individual soil sample and when there is not much difference in the compacted subgrade as well as the soil below it if there is not much difference in the cvr value then you you can you will use the conventional cvr value all right 
Now moving on to the next part of this video lecture, like what is the 90th percentile and 80th percentile CBR value. Now, as per IRC 37 published in 2018, the 90th percentile subgrade CBR value should be adopted for the design of high volume road such as expressway, national highway, state highway and urban road. For other category of road, the design can be done based upon 80th percentile CBR value if the design traffic is less than 20 MSA. If the design traffic is more than 20 MSA, then, then again we have to use 90th percentile CBR value. Alright, this is what IRC 37-2018 says that we have to use 90th percentile CBR value for uh, expressways, national highways and state highways and for other we can use 80th percentile CBR value for traffic less than 20 MSA. If it is greater than 20 MSA then, uh, then again we have to use 90th percentile CBR value for the other categories of road as well. Now what is before we understand what how to find out this 90th percentile value first of all like the reason why we are discussing is because the because the standard code is saying that we have to adopt the 90th percentile and the 80th percentile CBR value okay that's why we are discussing now what happens is in field generally the let's say a road stretch is being made let's say of 30 kilometer a 30 kilometer road stretch is being constructed in a place during sampling after every kilometer after every kilometer soil sample has been taken so like this we will have 30 samples we will have 30 samples just for the sake of discussion i'm saying that after every kilometer we are taking the soil sample that is there and then we take this soil sample in the lab we find out the cbr value and we find the after every kilometer the cbr is changing the cbr value is changing for the for this road stretch now since cbr is value is changing so which cbr should we adopt and that to compare to the overall length of construction the the change is very versatile right there is too much uh, variation in the uh, cbr value and uh, for for designing of a thickness we needs us a homogeneous data right so how to take the correct cbr value what which is the correct cbr value we have 30 samples each sample is giving new cbr value which is the correct sample so in that condition in case where where cbr value of soil subgrade varies along the highway alignment then the code says in that case we, we have to choose 90th percentile CBR value. In that case, we have to choose the 90th percentile CBR value. Okay. So how do we find out the 90th percentile CBR value? Again, I am taking example given in IRC 37-2018. So let's say along the stretch of the road, 16 samples were taken. Right. Each sample was uh, tested and for each sample CBR value was found and it was observed that each sample is giving different CBR value. You can see each sample is giving different CBR values, right? These are for a single road stretch where the, where the construction of road has to be done and all these 16 samples are giving different CBR value. So in that case, since all the severe values are different uh, from each other, then we have to go for the 90th percentile or the 80th percentile severe value as the case may be. The case we have discussed. Okay, the case are these. So, to find out the 90th percentile severe value, the first step is that we have to arrange them in an ascending order. We have to arrange them in ascending order. Alright, so after arranging them in ascending order, we have to find out the percentage value greater than or equal to the corresponding CBR value. Okay, so this 90th CBR value is the average CBR which will at that value the CBR is equal, uh, the all of the CBR is equal or greater than the design value. Okay, that is if you are taking a 90th CBR value, this means that at this CBR value, rest of the samples are greater or equal to this value 
right so to do that we will find out the percentage value greater than or equal to the corresponding severe value so first after arranging the arranging the severe value in ascending order that is from smallest to largest we are finding out the percentage value greater than or equal to the corresponding value that is for severe of of 3.5 we have 16 value so 16 by 16 into 100 the value is 100 for CBR of 4.2, percentage of value greater or equal to 4.2. How many values are greater or equal to 4.2? The rest. See, 3.5 is smaller. Rest is equal or greater than 4.2. So, 15 by 16 into 100. So, this will be 93.75. Same goes for the next value of 4.6. For 4.6, again, for this value, equal or greater than this value, 4.6. So we will have these value equal or greater than 4.6. So this will again be 14 divided by 16 into 100. And like this, we are going to find out the different percentile. After that, the step three is that we have to plot a graph between the percentage of value greater than equal to CBR value versus the CBR. That is the different CBR we are going to plot in x axis and percentage value equal or greater than we are going to plot in y axis okay so we'll have 100 here we have 93.75 that we are going to plot 93 93.75 right and likewise the next value next value next value and like that we are going to plot so from this we have this is your 90th percentile this is your 80th percentile so like this we are going to we are going to just find out which is the 90th and which is the 80th percentile value. Okay, this is like a small mistake. This should be 80th. Okay, this should be 80. The code also says, like right now we are having only 16 data, but we know that a uh, road can be uh, constructed for 100, 200 kilometers long, right? So in that case, if the data is large, CBR value can be grouped together and the same procedure can be followed. This means, let's say we have, we have CBR range of 4.2, 4.6, and this repetition was too much. Let's say for 100 kilometer road, and if we have taken, uh, let again, just for example, uh, we have taken samples after every uh, one kilometer then we will have 100 data like that and if many data are coming like 4.2 4.6 uh, 4.1 4.2 4.25 and like that then this can be clubbed together we can take an average value and then like that uh, we can group together get an average value and then we can work for the 90th and the 80th percentile CVR value as the case may be okay so uh, through this like uh, we find out the 19th and 80th percentile cbr value so i hope the use of 19th percentile cbr value is clear to you how do we find is also clear to you again if you have any doubt in the concept of cbr value effective cbr value the 19th percentile and 80th percentile cbr value you can always ask in the comment section okay so uh, that's it for the video. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope the lecture was useful to you. If so, uh, do share your views in the comment section. Um, like the video. If you found the video useful, share it among your groups and friends uh, to promote the video and subscribe to the channel for more useful information like this. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.